Hi everyone and welcome back to this channel. I'm Dr. Sam and today I'm back with some more information about how to remember everything you read. Now let me tell you about the contents of this video, okay? It contains identifying and recognizing what you read, questions, then immediate recall, mind map, active recall, passive ad, and spaced repetition. Okay. Now, in my last video, I spoke about how to effectively study any material for the first time. And this video is actually a continuation of those concepts. And before I start talking about the details of everything, I want to give you an example of nursery rhymes. Now, have you ever thought of how we remember our nursery rhymes to the T, even now, after about 20 to 30 years or more? How is it that we remember something we spoke or sang or read that time? Even now we remember it without reading it again recently. Why are these rhymes lodged so well in our long-term memories? Now, if we observe any kids, you will notice that at the age of about two to four years, when they're exposed to these nursery rhymes, they cannot really read or write. The only way they remember them is by actually hearing them in the school, at home, or watching TV, you know? But one very interesting thing that you will notice is that when they stop watching or hearing these words and when they are left to their own devices, you will notice them singing those tunes. Initially, they might not get them all, they might not remember all the words, but as days pass by, they do multiple repetitions of hearing those rhymes and then they get better. And then there are some days when the teacher asks them to sing the rhyme. Some days their parents or their grandparents ask them to sing that uh, nursery rhyme out loud, you know, multiple repetitions on different occasions. And as a matter of fact, in about a few months, they are able to sing the whole song without any errors. And as we all know, as grown-ups, we still remember those songs even now. Right. Now, let's apply the same concepts with this mnemonic, which is IQ is maps, which I just made up to make things a little bit easier, okay? In this, I stands for identify or recognize. This is your first reading. This is how you start. This is the time when those kids from our example, you know, they hear the nursery rhymes for the first time. And similarly for us, Right after the first reading, if you hear the same words or see the same page again, you will recognize it. Q stands for questions. And this I've explained very well in my last video. It's based on, you know, you just read a paragraph and then you question yourself, like, what did I just read in this? Okay. Then comes if, which is instant or immediate recall. Okay. Answering the questions here, or answering these questions in your own example, in your own simple words to yourself, helps your brain understand what exactly you're reading about. This is the recall, which is after the kid heard the rhyme for the first time or even the first few times, and they won't be able to sing it back. They may remember the first few words, may not, may, may not be the whole thing. They need help completing the rhyme with words or sentences that they forgot. And this is what happens to us as well after first reading and first recall or the first immediate recall. It's like you have this succulent here. When you see it at some place else apart from me, apart from this video, you would identify it as a succulent on my table. But just after seeing it once, if I ask you to draw it exactly from your memory, then you might miss a few points, a few details. This means that recognition is not effective on its own. It needs recall with it, which means instant recall is the first attempt of the brain to remember something. And of course, it's not perfect. But then you look at what you missed and then you draw that part in. So let me say that again. You draw what you saw here. You look at it, you draw what you saw here. And then you can't remember the whole thing, so you look at it again and see what part you missed and draw the missing part back in. Now hang on. The next time, after you've drawn this once, the next time when you try drawing the same succulent, I bet you remember what you missed much better. But how did you know what you missed? 
you knew this only after you started drawing from recall or what you remember, right? And what you're adding afterwards is making newer connections. This is where our next part comes in, which is M. And M stands for mind map. And this is where you're connecting all the dots. Now, in the last video, I did not elaborate about mind maps a lot, but in this one, I'm going to do it. Mind maps actually help in concept flow rather than just information flow. So if you're used to just having notes with a bulk of sentences written on a page linearly, then it isn't effective because the brain just takes it as a kind of information node for some time or a time being. So here explaining to you in this mnemonic, I'm almost kind of making a mind map. You may write certain words or numbers on it or doodle some things on it. So the lesser number of words that you have on your mind map, the better it is for your brain because it puts more pressure on your brain to recall those things and that in turn makes it go deeper into your memory once you actually recall it so what this means is having small gaps in information in your mind map actually allows recall efficiently so what i'm drawing here should actually be in your brain it's a concept which takes some time and practice and once you start doing it more and more often it becomes much easier i promise so your first mind map of a topic may have a lot of words, but as you do multiple revisions, try to reduce the number of words and introduce more number of doodles and arrows or lines, okay? Emphasize them maybe with different colors or something like that, okay? And finally, you will realize that you would remember the topic much better in here rather than just on the paper or your computer. I'm actually going to post a mind map on the topic of local anesthetics after this video. It's the initial one, okay, for local anesthetics with all the info on it. So you can actually work on it as per your needs and remove whatever you want to remove, okay? Now make sure you check it out after this video as I still have a lot to tell you in this one, okay? So why do we use mind maps? because research suggests that when you use, uh, make use of diagrams and flowcharts, it's easier to remember things and connect non-verbally. Like for example, using more doodling and arrows in my diagram here. When we read, a certain part of our brain is activated in storing the information. But when we draw small diagrams, then certain other areas in our brain are activated in retaining the same information in addition to the earlier ones. So the flow in mind maps actually helps you to create a connection between the concepts and the facts and the logic associated with it. You can emphasize things with different colors or thickness of the lines if you want. It still takes less time than actually typing individual colorful notes. So the bottom line is that make your mind map immediately after you finish reading some topic, okay? Now, after this part, after you're done with the mind map, take breaks in between your study time. Time yourself for what you want to read. Like, let's say you will focus for about 45 minutes to an hour or whatever time you feel you're the most focused then once you start feeling that whatever you're reading isn't going in your head, or even 50% of that is not getting retained, then stop. Stop working when you're tired, okay? And then take a rest of about five to 10 minutes because that's gonna help you. And what do you do when you're resting in those rest times for five to 10 minutes? Watch your social media? No, no. You don't wanna be putting in more information into your brain during the rest phase. So you can do certain things like maybe cleaning the house or doing some chores or playing some instrument or meditating or just taking a small nap for 10 to 15 minutes. And if you're like me and you feel like you might sleep a little longer than expected, if you get in the bed, then just go for a stroll or have a coffee in your patio. Change the scenery from your books to something something else as it will also relax your eyes from constantly focusing you know on those little small words in your book or your computer and my brother is an eye specialist and he says that looking at greenery 
can actually relax your eyes a lot. I've also tried putting on some spoons in the freezer for like five minutes and then put them on my eyes and just think about uh, what I just read. You know, try setting strict goals for the amount of study topics you would be dealing with in your focus time and then delay it. Because this time pressure usually helps in focusing much better, okay? Hey, if you've come so far in this video and found it helpful, then consider smashing the like button for me, okay? The next one in our mnemonic is the most important one of all of them, which is active recall. Now, during your rest phase, you can either think about what you just read or ask yourself questions, just like immediate recall, or discuss it with your friends. We want to be doing recall in a different way every time, okay? Like asking questions or other time you check some quizzes or some other time you draw the mind maps again or some other time just teach your friends or discuss with them. Teaching is one of the most important ways, the best ways of learning things because it forces you to think in a very different way as well as exposes you to various questions that you you know, questions and connections rather, which you might have never thought of, but your friend or your student might think of, okay? So the bottom line is, revise by recalling and questioning what you just read in your book or notes at the end of each topic without actually looking into the book, okay? You're not rereading the whole topic, okay? And P, which is the next one, it stands for passive add of selective information again. Now, as we do this active recall discussion with our friends, active recall or discussion with our friends, we will figure out that we are still missing or we still have certain things which we have forgotten. These are the only things that you need to read again, reread again, okay? At this time, you can even recheck your mind maps that you created and passively add what you missed, okay? After all of this, comes S. S stands for spaced repetition. On an average, it has been researched that you need to recall information at least five to six times before it gets embedded in your long-term memory. And this, my friends, is called as spaced repetition, which is essentially repeating the recall process that we discussed about before after a certain number of days. Now, you know this guy here, he's our famous German friend, Ebbinghaus, or however it's pronounced. I'm sorry if I'm butchering his name. According to him, you can either go back to what you read and recall it in one day, then three days, then six days, then after a couple of weeks, and then again in a month. And over a period of time, you will realize that the amount of passive adding or reading again you need to do is gradually decreasing after spaced repetition, okay? Now, when do you do this active recall with spaced repetition exactly? Of course, you can do it any time of the day whenever you feel like, but hang on a second. What if I told you that there is a productive way to revise in your sleep? Wouldn't that be awesome? This is where our last alphabet of the mnemonic comes, which is S, which is Sleep Dependent Memory Consolidation. Now, what is this? It's very important that just before you sleep, when you're lying in your bed, if you start thinking about the mind maps that you did some days ago, you might end up going off to sleep in the process. But, but... Our brain is such an amazing organ that whatever you started recalling is almost like replaying in your sleep. The information recalled during this time is actually solidified into long-term memory over a period of time. Hello? My friends, this is called sleep-dependent memory consolidation. And this is how you remember everything that you read. Now, if you wish to read the articles about all of the information that I spoke in this video, then I will link them below in the description box. And for those that are new, I'm Dr. Sam and I'm a dentist based in Washington. And I make interesting videos about dental school applications and studies. And if you wish to do the same, then consider subscribing. And oh yeah, um, the next video is going to be about local anesthesia, 
mind maps for local anesthesia for dentists. And I will include all of the information which is needed even after dental school as we are training patients in the dental clinics. And so are there any other mind maps you might be interested in? Please let me know your suggestions in the comments below. And until next time, adios for now.